Okay, good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank everyone, uh, Anvar and his team for having me here. It's a great opportunity, a great country, a great city, and up to now, it's a very, very nice and interesting symposium. So, when I was asked to give a talk, Anvar, I asked Anvar, what should I talk about? And he said, mining engineering in general and education. I said, how many hours do you want me to talk? He said, 20 minutes. I said, okay. So, today I'm going to just scratch the surface about mining engineering. It's not going to be a technical presentation like you saw the previous ones. It's a more general one, but I hope that you like it and you find it interesting. So, it's the view of an engineer, my view of how the mining life cycle is going on. But first, to catch up with the previous talkers and the next ones, we are here about engineering. What is an engineer? Don't expect an engineer to write poems or paint paintings or everything. What we do as engineers, we take natural science, we take mathematic facts, and we develop things, buildings, constructions for our everyday life. So, we're good at math. And here you can see some of the engineering miracles. Aeroplanes, big ships, Burj Khalifa, everything. Robotics, science. Our, uh, my colleagues from the mechanical engineering uh, discipline will talk about them later and from EAT, so to connect with all the disciplines together. But then, what comes to your mind, and that's a question now, when you hear the word mining engineer? Please, anyone? Yes. Geology. Geophysics. As a, as a, as a profession. I'm a mining engineer, you see me in a costume. That's rare, that's only for conferences. Normally, when you hear the word mining engineer, you expect to see people like that. Not yet ready for dinner. Or this gentleman over here, just came out of the office. Well, that could be, these are miners, but these were used to be miners of an old era. My impression, and what you should be your impression about mining engineers today, should be something like that. And this photo is taken from the research and educational mine that we have in Freiburg as our laboratory in Germany. And these are my colleagues, PhD students. And what you see, they're trying to catch up with new technologies using robots. So all disciplines are together. They are joined together in mining. And of course, we do our own engineering miracles. We can mine everywhere from the middle of Siberia with snow, to northern Canada between lakes, up to a depth of about four kilometers down nowadays in South Africa. And of course, we are using big toys, like big trucks here, you can see. Now, what is, why mining is important? And for me, I'll have to share a secret with you here now, Mining is a mother of all engineering disciplines. So, if it were not for mining engineers, all the other engineers would not have material to work on. And why I'm saying that? Civil engineers construct roads, bridges, houses, buildings, but they need material. Steel, stone, cement. If a mining engineer doesn't mind that, they don't have the material to work on. The same for chemical engineers or for EIT engineers about gadgets, smartphones, or in agriculture, or in energy, in oil engineering as well. Even your clothes, everything has minerals or metals. You've heard about metallic water. In fact, Anvar, can you give me some of the metals that you have on you? Sources from the Freiburg. Let me help you. Can you give me some of your metals? Uh, in my phone, of course. Of course. So this year, you may not see it, but without spe precious metals, gold, silver, rare earth elements, it cannot work. You need it for the screen, you need it for the hearing, you need it for the display, for everything. 
And not only smartphones, another example. Batteries, batteries for the vehicles. And you see here, they need lithium, they need nickel, cadmium, all these are metals and minerals that have to be mined from the surface or underground. But here comes another secret that, of course, mining is the mother of all engineering, but this is what miners get. And we cannot put just the raw material inside the batteries or inside the phones. There has to be a process. And here, for example, we need chemical engineers and what they were talking about before. We need mechanical engineers. We need a collaboration of all these disciplines in order to have the purified metals with the specific properties that at the end will give us what we want. And here another very simplified uh, diagram. So turning from ragstone through cracking, through metallurgy, separation, refining, to all these products that we use nowadays. And that brings us now to the life cycle of mine, of a mine. How do we find them? Do we just dig in luck without knowing? Do we mine it and just send it to the mill and then to the process? No, it's a whole procedure, a sophisticated procedure, starting with prospecting and exploration. That might take two to eight years. So we need geologists, geophysicists, as you already mentioned, mining engineers to find the properties, to find the deposit, to dig for it, to make drill holes, as I'll show you later. And this can take several years. And it can cost from 0 0.5 to even $15 million. What comes next? You find the deposit. You have to see how you plan it, how you develop it. You make mining method programs. You, you see what kind of equipment you're going to use. What are your costs going to be? This could take four to 12 years. And then the infrastructure, depending. You saw, I showed you a very big mine before. That big mine needs also very big infrastructure, meaning that it would go from one million to one billion. These are figures that may scare you now, but the profit out of these projects could be even bigger. And if there is no profit, of course, there would be no project. Then comes the actual mining, the extraction on the surface or underground as well. Could take from five to 100 years. In 2018, the coal mines in Germany were closed after 168 years of continuous active mining. We are talking about billions of tons of coal. And after that, we've got, what is closure? You, have, you cannot just abandon the mine like that. I mean, in the surface, you have to fix the area again so that it looks nice. But also in an underground mine, you may flood it with water. You have to, to see and make sure that the metals, the toxics that you have used that are released, they're not coming into contact with your groundwater, with the surrounding ecosystem. And that could take from two years to 50 years. Now, when it goes to exploration, again, new technology used. 50 years ago, they were using photographs from airplanes or they were going on foot. Now they're using drones. Much easier to scan the area. And after they scan the area, they go and drill. And they could drill for hundreds of meters down. And they could have a pattern of drills in order to see where is my deposit, at which depth. Make metallurgical tests. Does it worth it? How big is it? What is the grade of distribution? And then they take these cores and they analyze them with a microscope, with tests, with everything. And then comes the modeling. So they take these cores, you see here, the drill cores all together, and they make the block models. This shows the ore and it shows where the precious minerals are. You can see it here as well from the surface. And you develop, you calculate your reserves, your resources and then your reserves. And then you know, how can I mine it? You go and plan it. And its model, its cell here has a, a specific value, some of higher value, some of lower value. 
And then you go and say, how do I mine it? If it's very close to surface, probably I go dig around and have surface mining. All these that I'm showing you now are things that we are teaching or being taught in Freiburg, in the, whole, in the broader uh, discipline of mining engineering and geosciences. What happens if my deposit is very deep? Then I go underground, I go with shafts, I go with drifts, with openings, development in order to approach the deposit and take the ore out to extract it, to take it into surface and go on. And then I have to make my calculations. I'm an engineer, I need math. I cannot do without them. How many million tons can I produce per day? What is my cutoff grade? What are my capital costs? Are they one million? Are they 50 million? Are they one billion? What are my operating costs every day? How many years the mine would exist? And so on. So many parameters which if you put together, they all consist the mine planning. It's not just how deep the deposit is or what the shape of it is. It's also its geology. It's also its contact, rock mechanics. It's also its economic aspects, the costs, environmental aspects. Let's say that you find a very, very big gold deposit just beneath Baku. Would you mine it? would be difficult because then you have to relocate people out of Baku. Would you do it? Probably not. So environmental aspects, social, political aspects as well. Processing, market outlook. Is it a good metal, a good mineral? Can I sell it or I will just mine it and I cannot do anything yet and then I have a stock of it and I'm broke. And after I plan, I go to the actual operations, and that is why for this symposium I chose not to have a technical, uh, as much as possible, not a technical presentation, but just show figures. What do we do? Again, we drill, we put explosives, we blast the ore in a surface mine. Then we load it in these small trucks that you saw before in the picture. We go it to the crusher and then to further processing. That's on surface mining. What happens when we're going to underground mining? Again, we drill, or we drill horizontally, or vertically, or in any direction our mining method says that we have to do. Then we blast. Of course, it's very, very difficult and very dangerous to be close to a blast underground. That's why there are no pictures. But then you go and take the extracted door, and again, crush it, make it smaller particles, and process it. I won't lie to you, it's not an easy, it, must, it, it is an exciting profession, but it's not easy. And it can be dangerous, both in surface, but also more particularly in underground mining. And that's why, for example, you have to take precaution measurements. Like, for example, having roofs while you're drilling or putting support. Or since you're in a place that is has just been opened. You have to ventilate, you have to put fresh air inside. Not just for people to breathe, but also for the toxic gases from the explosion to get out so that you can work again. And of course, you, can, you should monitor all the time. Nowadays, using tablets, using sensors, doing it automatically inside the mine. The whole process actually, here you can see remote drilling. The whole process is going to automation. And that could be actually the future of mining, engineering, for those that could be interested in it. And of course, it's not just mining itself. As I said, it's the infrastructure. You have to maintain these trucks. And what is if you're underground, 800, 1,000 meters down deep? You have to have a workshop there. You cannot afford to take the machines up to the surface, fix them and put them again down. So what do you do? You have a whole workshop down there. The same for the facilities for the miners. Here you see this is a mine in Finland in 1.5 meter, thousand meters deep. And here you can see the cafeteria. It has internet access. I have checked it. Coffee and so on because it's a hard profession. 
eight hours. The miner has to get some rest. So it doesn't, it's not efficient for him to go up again and go down again. So there are facilities underground. And of course for safety as well. And what happens after mining? That's not my field, but I had to put it in. Processing, metallurgy, chemical engineering. And here you can see different ways from flotation, from solvent extraction, and so on, from different companies. Because you have to take this ore, you have to purify the metals and use the metals with their properties. And of course, environmental concerns, something that Anvar will talk later on about in more detail. But it's something that has to be important because this is a scene that you can see in China. And this as well. And we don't want to see these pictures. Mining could be harmful for the environment. But actually not mining, but pra practices in mining. If mining fo follows the regulation and everything is according to the plan, then probably, hopefully, nothing will happen. But if you don't follow the rules, then you might get severe environmental pollution. And what do you do? Either in that case or when you are done with mining. You have the post-mining session. You have to rehabilitate your area. If you have a surface mine, and nobody wants to see an abandoned surface mine having, living like a, a scars in the surface of the earth. So what do you do? You rehabilitate the area. And that is from Vismuth that is close to Freiburg. It used to be uranium mining surface and underground. And it took, it was abandoned. And then a program was funded of about 8 billion euros in order to rehabilitate this in 15 years time. Actually now, the area is also used for, as a park for families to go there. There's also a playground. There are athletic facilities and so on. And this may take for years. Here in Canada, after post mining, they go even to the surrounding ecosystem to see if water has been contaminated and if that has gone to the aquifers long far away from the mine or to the plants as well. And this procedure could take about 20, 30, 40 years, depending. If, for example, you have uranium mining, you have radiation, you have to be very, very careful about these issues in post-mining. To close this short presentation, I didn't want to put any comments or conclusions. I just wanted, out of curiosity for myself as well, to see the mining industry map in Azerbaijan. And you can see here that you had $20 billion from exports of fuels, of course, oil is number one, and other products. Mining and quarrying accounted for about 30% of the GDP in 2014. And you have 768 enterprises engaged in mine activities in general. What kind of mines? Let's start with the metals. You have alumina, you have copper, gold, iron, steel, silver. Let's go to the industrial minerals. Bentonite, soda, cement, gypsum, iodine, limestone, salt, sulfitic acid, of course, when it comes to fuel energy, natural gas and petroleum. So it's a rich country and it has mining potentials. Therefore, it should have potentials for its mining education. And with that, I'd like to thank you. I don't know if we have time for questions now or for later on. I'll be happy to answer.